I'm Jean Rio from the University of Toulouse, and the aim of my PhD is to develop the use of iron isotopes as a heat tracer for ancient metals. And so today I will talk about the comparison of some of my reasons with that obtained with more classical tracing methods. So metal tracing first consists in the identification of problem sources in order to restitute ancient trade networks. And it also consists in the identification of ancient smelting process. So in this purpose, we try to find some geochemical tracer, which has preserved all, all along the shell operatoire, so between the ore and the metal. So uh, concerning iron metals, we can uh, distinguish two types of methods. Uh, element analysis of uh, major and trace elements uh, with uh, electron microprobe analysis, or laser, ab laser ablation. And since the development of uh, mass spectrometer with multi-collection, we can use uh, uh, isotopic analysis of lead, lead, strontium, and osmium have been used uh, to trace uh, iron metals. However, both of these methods may, may show some limitation. Uh, for example, we can have overlaps of uh, composition between uh, distant regions. Well, for in this example here, we can see the, the overlapping composition of cerium and lantern from distant, uh, distant region. And we can also have uh, heterogeneity of the materials. In, the, in this example here, despite the lead isotope composition allows the distinguishing uh, two potential sources, the composition of uh, the two artifacts is uh, really heterogeneous, so we can't, in this case, uh, suggest any provenance link for this object. Uh, moreover, we can have uh, an important contribution of the smelting device, which could change the composition of the tracer. And uh, sometimes the detection of uh, slag inclusion in the metal to perform uh, elemental analysis may induce important damage on the archaeological artifacts. So it would be quite problematic for museum pieces, for example. So of course, here, here is just uh, some example of imitation, and many studies have uh, used this kind of uh, analysis um, with, with success. But uh, this simulation showed the need to develop new tracers to complement the existing ones. So previous studies have shown the, the, the important variability of the iron isotope composition in, in uh, different ores. So for example, here at the, in the same mining district, district, we can see the, the variability of different types of ore. And here we can see the difference uh, of iron isotope composition between the uh, two regions. So this variability may allow distinguishing ores according to their genesis and weathering process. So during the first part of my PhD, we analyzed materials from uh, experimental iron ore, uh, iron ore reduction, and uh, we demonstrate that the iron isotope composition is preserved all along the shell operator. So in order to validate this new approach, we try to compare our results with that of other tracing methods. And in this, in this purpose, we analyze uh, iron trade objects, and in particular, we analyze iron bars, which have been found in Roman shipwrecks uh, near the Saint Marie de la Mer in the southeast of France. And then we try to apply this uh, approach to the study of, um, of a new archaeological, archaeological context, and in particular in uh, pre Roman uh, smelting activities in the north part of the mountain noir. So the Montagne Noire was a major region of iron production during the Roman period. For example, here in the site of uh, Les Martis, uh, many uh, remains of Bumeri furnace have been found. And uh, previous studies have suggested that some of the bar found in the Roman shipwrecks in the Les saint marie de la Mer have been uh, uh, produced in the, in the Montagne Noire. So we, we tested this hypothesis with uh, iron isotope analysis. So first here, the, um, the results uh, of uh, Baron et al. Uh, uh, show the different, uh, different groups of bar from Les Saint-Marie de la Mer. 
And uh, one group has a, a, composition, a composition similar to that of the Montagno, while another group has a clearly distinct composition suggesting another provenance. So we analyze different parts of both of, the group, of these groups, and uh, we try to compare the composition with that of materials from the Montagnois. So, except for two parts here, we analyze at least two samples for each part, and sometimes more, for example, in this bar. So first we can see that uh, each bar has an homogeneous ionized dot composition. Except, except maybe here for uh, corroded iron, which showed the need to, to perform uh, our analysis on uh, non-corroded metal. So in terms of provenance hypothesis, the bar from the first group have composition which are similar to that of uh, materials from the Montagne Noir. So this tends to validate the, the provenance assumption of, uh, from the Montagne Noir. However, for the second group, uh, some bars have clearly dis distinct composition, but others have composition which overlaps with that of matter from the Montagne Noir. So in this case, we can't validate the assumption of uh, uh, another provenance. However, an interesting thing here is that each bar has uh, uh, its own uh, ironized top composition, which is not the case for elemental uh, composition. So here, um, ironized top provides a more discriminative trace. Then we apply this approach to the study of, uh, of uh, smelting remains uh, in the north part of the Montagne Noire, so in the, part, in the department of the town. And we collect ore and slag samples in order to, to compare the elemental uh, lead and the ironized top composition. And moreover, in this sector, uh, iron, pre Roman iron bars have been found. And uh, these bars, because of their, their production period and their shape, are really rare. So, um, because of or limit, limited, uh, because of the limited damage induced by our analysis, uh, we were allowed to uh, perform uh, ironized top analysis on these parts. So first here we compare the composition, the, the trace element composition and then the isotop composition of materials from the north part of the Montagne Noire, so the, the, the town department, and the, the, the southern part of the Montagne Noire. <laughs> So as you can see here, trace element composition allows distinguishing these two sectors. Uh, for example, with the tungsten and barium composition here. But it's not the case with uh, lead isotope composition because of the highly, highly heterogeneous uh, composition of matter from the town and the partly overlapping composition of both sectors. So concerning the um, the ironized top composition of these two sectors, we can see here that they are also overlapping. So this shows the need to use different tracers in order to, to, to well constrain the, the signature of uh, different production region. Then we compare the, we compare the composition of iron bars from the town uh, with uh, that of the material from both the northern and southern sector. First, you can see that the, uh, the, these bars have a homogeneous isotopic composition, which may reflect the, the choice of a specific form. Uh, however, in terms of uh, traceability, we, we, we can't uh, suggest any uh, provenance link because of the overlapping composition of both. And then we compare the composition of uh, this bar from the town with that of uh, bars which have been produced in the Montagne Noire. And uh, we can see here that the, these two productions have a significantly distinct ironized top composition. So this may, this may reflect different provenance. Uh, a provenance from the north part of the Montagne Noire for the pre-Roman bars, and a provenance from the south part of the Montagne Noire for, for the Roman production. So here in, in, the, in the scale of the mining district, ironized top uh, allows distinguishing two productions. So that's uh, could be a relevant trace. So in conclusion, iron bars have an homogeneous ironized composition. 
and uh, different the parts from different ori origin may be distinguished with their with their aronisotop signature. So aronisotops may provide a potential relevant tracer for for problem studies. However, uh, we need to compare different tracing methods because of possible overlapping composition, and this shows the need uh, the the important the important importance of uh, previous archaeological investigation in order to well constrain the, the context of uh, the, the archaeological context. So in perspective, um, it would be interesting to perform, uh, to analyze different ores and slags from different regions in order to, to estimate the intra and inter-regional variation rate. It also could be interesting to perform this analysis on museum pieces because of the limited damage uh, of our method. And moreover, we can try to use this approach to, 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 to analyze, uh, to study the provenance of non-ferrous metal and maybe to, to find a way, a common way to trace uh, both uh, non-ferrous and ferrous metal. 